Hello and welcome back. Some of you have asked for a more detailed explanation of the system that I've installed, so I want to run through that now with you. Okay, so these are the two pipes from the external unit through the isolation valves, which are both closed. That's because I've got the system pressurised to about one and a half bar at the moment. So this is the flow and turn coming down the wall, all the way down here. Um, this one's flow, that's the heat meter and the flow into the hydraulic station. That's the return out of the hydraulic station through the filter with its, with its own isolation valves, through the temperature sensor for the energy meter and back up the wall and out. Now, out of the hydraulic station we've got the hot water circuit and, sorry, the yeah, hot water circuit and the heating circuit. The heating circuit comes down here and comes to a T that's a pressure bypass, so that's if the valves are closed. The pump can still um, force water through this bypass valve. But the hot water comes out of hydraulic station to this T and either goes down if zone 1 is on and the valve is open, or up if zone 2 is on, or indeed both. The other output from the hydraulic station is the hot water, which is this one. This is a 22 mil output, simply because the circuit's a 22 mil circuit. So that goes up to the hot water tank. Uh, I also put a, a drain cock because this was the lowest point on that circuit. So it means I can drain that, that particular circuit. I've also got a drain cock on here, which is on the return. This is the shared return from both zone one and this also shares a return with zone 2 and the hot water use the same return. And that goes back up into the hydraulic station and you can see there's a T off there. So that's the, the hot water return there and that's the hot, sorry, the um, heating return there. So that's the system as it stands. What's new is this bypass valve. I installed that uh, due to someone's suggestion on Facebook and that just allows the pump to pump if valves are closed. Um, as I say pressure is in the system at the moment and there's no leaks. I did have three leaks and I was worried that when I did all this end feed soldering that these would be the leaky parts. None of them leaked, none of the compressions leaked. The three leaks I had were parallel threads here. This is actually, actually a one and a quarter inch socket. And there's a, a reducer in here, which is a one and a quarter to one inch reducer, parallel thread onto um, an iron end, one inch iron end. Both of these leaked and the parallel thread, which is on this temperature sensor, leaked. Uh, this was on and off multiple times trying to get it solved. Couldn't I couldn't take up the slack with the PTFE. So what I had to use was this stuff here, which is pipe sealing cord. Never used it before, but I can recommend it. it it's very, very good. If you have a, a lot of slope in the threads and the parallel threads, that's the stuff to get. So that's the internal system as it stands. And as I say, it's pressurised at the moment. I'll, I'll go outside now and I'll give you an, uh, a view of the outside, what it currently looks like. So here we are outside and there's the unit sitting. We, we brought it around the other day. So this is about to go up and be mounted onto those brackets. Problem I've got is that I need to build a tower here to winch it up on. And my gas lines are too short and what it would mean would be that the gas bottle itself would actually be enclosed by the tar which I don't want so what I want what I've had to do is order a longer hose to get the gas bottle out of the way so we can build a tar here and simply start raising this up and what we're going to do is we're going to use a winch a mechanical winch ratchet type thing and winch it up half a metre and then put flooring in under it um, and draw it down to the flooring then winch it another half metre do the same again and winch it all the way up above the brackets those will be removed above the brackets put the brackets back on and drop it down onto these cantilever brackets 
There's the isolator and the feed from the house. It also has the 24 volt bus output and they go through the isolator and then down to, to there just to be wired in. They also, there also are, sorry, we also have the flow and return pipes there. They're just waiting to be connected up. And we've got a bit of brickwork to do there. So, the problem has been that this pathway is quite narrow. It's just about three foot wide. And we can't put up standard scaffolding. I have cup and lock, cup lock scaffolding. We can't put that up. If I had to, had to order brackets to allow me to put up a narrower scaffolding tower, which will allow us to winch the unit up and mount it on the brackets. Okay, well that's it for now. That's the state of play. And hopefully within the next two, th two to three weeks, it'll be up and running. Thanks for listening. Any comments, questions, queries, drop me a comment. Thanks. Bye.